to What's Right with the World with your host, Glenn Ambrose. Hello, everybody. Welcome to What's Right with the World. Today, we are going to discuss a local story for Ben. Yeah, it not used to local be, for me anymore because I used I've to moved. be local for you. Um, used to be local for me, but local for Ben. So go for it, Ben. All right. So uh, this is coming from um, the Westerly Sun dot com, um, and we actually have two stories uh, based on the same thing, which is the beach. Um, and so Mesquamica Beach in Rhode Island is a very historic um, beach and a and a big destination for people in Massachusetts and Connecticut, as well as Rhode Island for the summer. And they had a huge problem with trash. Um, at some point, in, uh, I don't even know when, uh, the state instituted at their state beach, which is a half a mile long, um, a take-in, take-out policy. So they have no trash cans anywhere on the beach. Uh, so you have you're responsible to take it out. And guess what happened? <laughs> Nobody Everybody left all that crap there. <laughs> yeah. So the first the first busy weekend, uh, it was a complete disaster. Um, trash literally everywhere. Uh, they stacked a trailer full of trash bags when they did. Wow. So a so a 19 year old girl named uh, Justine Guvin. Um, in, in the spring, actually, before this even, uh, you know, we knew how big of a problem it was going to be, started a Facebook group and a little uh, group of her friends called the Misquamacate Waste Warriors. And, uh, th- their goal was pretty simple. Just a bunch of young kids, um, who were really, uh, or young adults who were really passionate about the beach, loved it, wanted to keep it clean decided that once a week they were going to meet together at the state beach parking lot and go pick up the beach. And they did. And, um, it's caused quite a ripple effect. The community has gotten behind them and they actually had a press conference last week with the Lieutenant governor, Dan McKee, the Lieutenant governor of Rhode Island. And, uh, they changed the policy. Wow. So it's still take in, take out, but they now have, dumpsters at the beach and they're working with the business association down by the beach to uh hire people who are specifically instructed to uh help people take care of the trash huh. and um and they're going to revisit it in the fall when budgets and stuff can be more approved for for more um info but uh basically this 19 year old girl um saw a problem wanted to do something about it and uh, really helped this rallying cry for this beach cleanup. Um, and, uh, you know, it got, it's gotten a ton of uh, statewide attention and, you know, been on the local NBC affiliate and CBS affiliate and stuff. Well, and that's, you know, that the beauty of it is, you know, she was so solution based, You know, there's so much, we're so complaint based a lot of times, and this is solution based The you know, she saw her problem. It's like, well, what can, what can I do? What can we do? What can me and my friends do to, to help solve this problem? And the thing that we, a lot of times we don't understand is, is is a solution has such a strong pull to it that it can actually change things. So it's like, you know, I mean, the the people who were the people who wanted to complain and tell her that she shouldn't do this are going to say, well, if you clean it up, then the state won't clean it up. You know, the state's not going to help if you take care of their problem. That's the first complaint that jumps out, you know, but that's not what happened. You know, because she's walking in the direction of the solution. Then all of a sudden it starts gaining attention and momentum. Now all of a sudden, you know, I don't care why the state took notice. I don't care if they wanted to look good in the public eye or or if they just thought it was, you know, something that needed attention or it, I, it doesn't matter. The point is, is her doing this really brought attention to not only the problem, but, uh, but possible solutions for it. And, you know, and, and it worked and it's, it's a 19 year old girl gets her friends like that. Who can't do that? 
you yeah, know exactly like th- this there's so many issues in this world that with people like her going hey i see an issue let's head in the direction of the solution just to the level that we're capable of you know we she didn't go out and try to overturn laws she didn't go steal dumpsters and bring them over and she didn't go buy 4000 trash cans she didn't you know she just did what she was capable of and it blossomed from there and this is this is what's right with the world absolutely and uh not only that but she's getting help now from the community obviously in the state um and uh, as are the the waste warriors themselves including uh, one restaurant owner um Tim Brennan who owns the restaurant Two Little Fish um and uh they are in a very delicate spot um in Musquamacate so they're right next to the beach and then on the other side there's a salt pond behind them mm. um so they uh had to put in a um a very special uh septic system um uh, filtration says they um they no longer have uh, that this this restaurant has gone completely eco friendly basically. So they have no plastic bags. Um, they have all disposable silverware and plates and stuff. And uh, they they do a lot of stuff with the local aquarium. So like they're they're doing um a fantastic thing, and they are helping uh the kids who are doing the the beach cleanup and giving them free meals and stuff as well. So there's wow. also there's also an awesome article on that same website about um Tim Brennan and Two Little Fish and the awesome eco-friendly stuff that they're doing. So this beach is uh is really you know becoming um it, it's got a lot of what's right with the world this week <laughs> in it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, and it can be, you know, I and I think we touch on this every once in a while in different episodes. It's, you know, this is where things start, you know, when you, when you have, it, it, it takes one business to start doing something and to have positive results. And then another business does it and another business does it. And then all of a sudden, you know, who knows? It's like, it could be, you know, 20 years from now, you know, all the beach establishments around the world could be completely eco-friendly and all this stuff. And we go, oh, wow, isn't that cool? Look at how things evolved. Yeah, but look where it started, you know, by just somebody just doing it. That's, you know, and and supporting the the, the other things and, and understanding, you know, I think that one thing that business owner understands is that that business is not just one little self-contained unit. You know, he's concerned about the area around it and, and the kid and the kids that are helping the area around it and to help them. And it's, you know, this is that's community. And as we all work together, things get better. So absolutely. And I'm really proud that that's a local story because, you know, those are some great people doing that very, very great things. Absolutely. In a smallest state. <laughs> nice job, Rhode Island. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, that's it for today. That's it. Thanks for listening, everybody, and keep finding what's right with the world and sharing it on the Great Love Project, and uh, using the hashtag the Great Love Project, the hashtag What's Right with the World. Link it all together and share all this wonderful stuff going on. All right, thanks for listening. We'll talk at you soon. Glenn is available for life coaching sessions. To book an appointment or for more information, go to glennambrose.com, follow him on Facebook and Twitter, or click the link in the description of this episode.